William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. One sure way to reduce the body beautiful and eliminate excess fat is horizontal living. Lie prone and don't blow your lid. Your coffin lid, that is. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. A smart confidential cop keeps a straitjacket handy as standard office equipment. The time has to come when you want to rush a prospective client to Bellevue for observation. What else can you do when a guy pops in, tells you his name is Julius Caesar, and then without any further explanation, starts bawling like a baby? (laughs) Julius Caesar, right out of Runyon. (laughs) Pants under his hip line like a burlicue comic. A checkered vest with egg stains. And a face that could only advertise a meat grinder. Here, my handkerchief. Dry your eyes. I only said to dry your eyes. You through blubbering? Uh, uh, yeah. What are you crying over? Cleo. Your dog? My wife. She ran off with a piano mover? Would I be wearing this armband? Oh, black armband. I'm sorry. You're a widower. No. You said she was your wife. Is my wife. She died and came back? Cleo never died. Then why the mourning band? Cleo is going to die for sure. Some incurable disease? (laughs) You and me put together, Cleo is healthier. Now I'm in utter confusion. I was to a tea room. I didn't know they had pool tables and tea rooms. Look, I'm in there getting my fortune told. I'm going to lose Cleo, it says in the tea leaves. Cleo has got to go. What's going to kill her? Not what. Who? That is what I want to know. You, maybe? Chop off my arm, I wouldn't hurt Cleo. I love this doll. That's the uh, whole basis of your fears? Cleo didn't make out in the tea leaves? Let alone that, someone has tried to get to her already. Clear up, uh, get to her for me. Rub her out. Depart, Cleo, from my midst. Somebody tried to murder Cleo? What was I saying? Don't you know? Okay, murder. Describe the attempt, Julius. Cleo has got a medicine for Pep. A hangover had her down. So she took a swallow of this stuff. What was she drinking instead? Poison. Somebody had switched the bottles on Cleo. That's the attempt? No, I got a few more. This one, for instance. Coming down the stairs. Soap. Now her spine is out of whack. Cleo leans a little. To the right or left? Left. No, uh, right. No. Oh, I give up. (laughs) Who's behind all the mayhem? I wouldn't be here if I knew. Here. Three C's on account. I took a mortgage on a shop. Shop? Flowers. I run a flower shop over at Prince and Fort. For free, any time, I'll make you up a wreath. Oh, no, thanks. Save it for Cleo. The biggest in town. When Cleo goes, it'll need a Mack truck to haul it. Here, I'll, uh, I'll show you a picture of Cleo in a bathing suit. Hmm. Where's the bathing suit? Bikini. That's a type suit. In the picture there, Cleo's in the contest. Contest? Yeah, Mrs. Apple Pie, 1952. This is a contest for married queens who can bake. Uh, A gent who manufactures the stuff, the pies, that is, Mr. Willoughby. He's uh, he's sponsoring the contest, 20 grand. 20 grand? That's the first prize. How are Cleo's chances? You've seen her picture. Hmm, but I haven't tasted her pie. Smooth. It slides into your stomach. You don't even need no teeth. Cleo can't miss. Only, you see, that's what's going to get her knocked off. The envious competition. Yeah, them. Cleo's got to be stopped, somebody figures. Oh, please, don't leave me lose her. Well, I'll do my best. Where is Cleo now? Calamity House. That's a hotel uh, this sponsor Willoughby rented out in Sheepshead Bay. The whole joint. 
Every contestant has got to stay there and take a turn in the kitchen. Baking pies. All week long. They judged them on the pies, and then they judged them on their looks. Calamity House. Okay, Julius, you've whet my appetite. I'll go have myself a pie. As it so happened, I ran into Cleo before I got to Calamity House and Apple Pie Heaven on the highway, going up an incline where a sign warned Horseshoe Curve. Coincidence or destiny? I made a note to look up a mystic and ask him sometime. Anyhow, I hadn't made the top of the hill when a car flung around the upper level curve coming down toward me. A car out of control, it looked like. I braked to a dead stop. A runaway car whizzed past me. I got a photo look of a lady driver, and then came the crash. A car crash creates employment. Specialists pile in like grips at a sideshow. When the emergency squads got finished, I huddled with Lieutenant Trav Rogers. Trav had jumped at the chance to head out to Sheepshead Bay at the first radio flash. Trav liked the sea air. Cleo Odell was her name. Cleo Odell Caesar. Caesar? She was married to Julius Caesar. Her age didn't show. I'm not joking. No, you're not? All right, instruct me. Later. Meanwhile, uh, let's get down to the whys and wherefores of the accident. Negligent driving or inexperience coming down inclines or her brakes wouldn't work. Au revoir, Cleo Odell. No good, Trav. What's wrong with my reconstruction? The cuts and gashes on the victim's face and neck. You get badly marked up and cut racing down hell into a crash? I examined the car. So did I. The safety glass cracked, but it didn't shred or splinter. Yes, that's so. I made a note of that. Even wondered a bit. With no chips of glass flying about, how could she get cut up as she was? Another thing. Yes, Craig? If you checked over the corpse. I left that to Dr. Conway. I didn't. I satisfied myself. The bleeding from those cuts on her face and neck... They'd begun to dry. You're certain of that? I'm positive they couldn't be fresh wounds sustained from the crash itself. Those cuts and gashes came earlier, before the bottom of the hill. You mustered a pretty convincing story. I've got a clincher. Come over to the wreck. Take a look at the gas accelerator. All right. So? Feel around it. It's wedged to the floorboard. What's wedging it? What? Oh, wait. A pebble. This pebble was wedging the gas accelerator. I discovered that 20 minutes ago. But I had two men, Muller and Wilson. They missed the pebble. They weren't looking for evidence of foul play. No. Looked for all the world like a cut and dried vehicular accident. A car out of control, an unfortunate fatality. It was murder. Cleo Odell was beaten to death, beaten around the head and neck by a blunt instrument. That's where she got those cuts and gashes. The killer then sat her in the car, rigged the gas accelerator by wedging it with this pebble, switched on the ignition, sent the car down the incline. Trying for the perfect murder. In Calamity House, pattering about the main suite like a Maharaja, I found the contest sponsor and pie manufacturer, Mr. Willoughby. His Highness was wearing a scarlet lounging robe with a golden dragon growling across it. Uh, This uh, tragedy, Mr. Craig, it casts a damper. Murder does that, Willoughby. Murder? What do I talk? The first police flash was a mistake. Leah was beaten to death before she went joyriding down an incline. I'm bewildered. I, I cannot grasp. Let's stray from the corpse until your blood pressure can take it better. Answer me this. What were Cleo Odell's chances of pocketing your $20,000? Why, most excellent indeed. Her pies hit the spot. They were outstanding. In the first four contest days, Cleo Odell had won 456 points. We have a point scoring system. Skip the intricacies. Who was the runner-up? The misses closest to Cleo's 456. The contestant most likely to win, if not for Cleo. Why, uh, Lois LaRue... Her point score so far, I believe, is uh, 372. Yes, 372. And the rest of the field? Oh, below 200. Their chances of forging ahead to victory are quite doubtful. Okay, then. Lois LaRue. Cleo alive could cost Lois $20,000. Well, surely you don't think... I'm only asking. Now, uh, about looks, uh, shapes, how much rides with that? 
Physical beauty determines the winner only in the event that there is a close race between uh, two or three contestants. If the spread in points between contestant one and two, or one and two and three, is less than 50... Less than 50? Well, that ends that. Cleo is a mile ahead of everybody. Her runner-up and survivor, this Lois LaRue, is also miles ahead of the field. Yes. After Cleo Ordell, it appears the award must go to Lois LaRue. Who awards points? Or maybe, let me say it this way, who judges the quality of the pies and hands out the points? Uh, why, uh, our judge, Mr. Cornell, uh, Vincent Cornell. Uh, Mr. Cornell is a well-known illustrator. Who appointed him judge? I did. If you're minded to impugn... Simmer down, Your Highness. I'm just acquainting myself with background. All right for me to go have myself a pie? Why, of course. Any number of them. The kitchen is on the basement level. Every pie is enriched with exclusive Willoughby ingredients. A secret miracle chemical, exclusive with Willoughby. Cut, you've got your plug in. You're keeping me from the pies. I loaded up on pies, and then I let Lois LaRue feed me vital statistics about herself. A brunette with hair of midnight black, and a cute nose that tilted at the tip like a ski jump. Her bathing suit made me feel overdressed. Lois looked like she'd been tipped off to my coming. She had soft lights and softer music going. A drink, Mr. Craig? No, thanks. And uh, let's switch off the music, huh? Romance and murder mix badly. Oh, it was a terrible thing. Cleo had so much to live for. There was a neat $20,000 in her future. But you can't say that with certainty. The contest hasn't finished. It was in the bag for Cleo. She was a mile ahead on points. Ahead of you. There are nine contestants here in Calamity House. The other seven are hanging on for the exercise. All right, I won't argue it. Except to say that I felt... Well, I felt I could win somehow. And somehow you're going to, that's for sure. I don't know how to take that. Resent it if you can muster outraged innocence. If I can... Why, of all the gods... Ah, uh-uh, no throwing things. And don't throw music and curves at me, beautiful. I look at that utterly utter torso of yours, all I can see is a corpse. The corpse of Cleo Odell. Now, let's get businesslike. Well, what do you expect of me? Some insight into you. You're right up front in my gallery of suspects. Merely because I was closest to winning after Cleo? Because 20 grand is bait, and you look to me like hunger. Like you'd die if you lost the contest. All right. I admit it. I am intense about winning. I don't dare lose. This contest isn't my gamble alone. They're investors. It's their gamble, too. Investors meaning... Backers. My family and friends. They've shelled out every penny they could raise to dress me, pay for my photographs, publicity, miscellaneous expenses. <clears throat> I'm a corporate body. I've been cut into percentages, into pieces. Familiar stuff, speaking of contests. How does your husband fit into the situation? My husband? This is a contest for married women only. Oh, yes, my husband, Zach. Zach? Zach Foster, he he manages me too, represents me. Where is he? Why, around. Zach floats around. What is he, a balloon? Oh, well, I, I mean, Zach can't be pinned down to a place, so to speak. He's on the move, making arrangements, contacts. Sometimes he's here at the hotel, other times somewhere else. I see. Next time you see Zach, tell him to stay put long enough to exchange introductions with me. Tell him Barry Craig wants to talk to him. The absent husband, Zach, presented himself a little unexpectedly. I was down in the kitchen again, sinking my overjoyed molars into more pies. You Barry Craig? Wait till I check my driver's license. Put your hands up. Must I? And don't put your hands up. See if I can. <laughs> Teach you. Oh, my jaw. Teach me what? To terrorize my wife. I talk better standing. I terrorized your wife, you say? No, it's LaRue. I found her in hysterics, a poor kid. Crying her eyes out. You just left, she said. I talked to her, sure. You worked over her. Like she was on trial. She must feel awfully guilty to have reacted like that. Watch that tongue, Craig. You can't throw murder accusations around and get away with it. 
Not with Zack Foster around, huh? Lois is sensitive. Like a cigar store Indian. She goes off her feet. She can't bake. She thins down because she can't eat or sleep. She loses her figure. She consequently loses the contest. Yeah. That's your game? To take the steam out of Lois? You working on the slide for some other contestant? Uh-huh. You admit it. I'm working in the open for some other contestant. For Cleo Odell. Wise guy. Cleo Odell. Want to confess to murdering her, maybe? Craig, I'm going to declare total war. You already declared it, chum. You fired the first shot. It's my turn now for a counteroffensive. Uh. I was up before the count of ten, chum. Let's see if you beat my time. One thing about a contest judge, he doesn't ever look the part. He looks nervous, like he's only doing the job because somebody's got a gun at his head. The illustrator, Vincent Cornell, gave the standard impression. Oh, how I ever got into this thing. How did you? Mr. Willoughby requested me to judge the contest as a personal favor to him. Why should that move you? Well, Mr. Willoughby is an important advertiser in magazines I do illustrating for. It was... uh, necessary goodwill that I... And you did. Hmm. Now to the contest. Question. Has there been any undue pressure on you? Undue pressure? To influence you, get you to vote points, favor some one contestant. Well, what makes you think to ask that? Since I don't see you blow an immediate fuse, it looks like my question is very much in order. Well, I... I have no answer for you. Don't make me coax too hard. We're not just passing the time, Cornell. Yes, I I know the seriousness, the enormity, Miss Odell. The recent Miss Odell. I I can't afford to get involved and get mixed up. A scandal could be troublesome to me professionally. Pursue your investigation in some other manner. Interrogate the others, and good luck to you. I, I simply will not be involved, and I'll say nothing. In fact, I'm I'm resigning as judge at once. Come off it, Cornell. You can resign all over the lot, but you're still going to find things troublesome. What What do you mean? Late hours in a certain room in police headquarters. There'll be 20 guys packed around, with you the center of attraction. How do you sleep sitting up in a straight chair? Mr. Craig, I, I'm confused. Tell what you know and watch the confusion evaporate. Undue influence. What about it? Well... I found myself pressed to favor Cleo Odell. Cleo Odell? You seem surprised. Yeah. I thought any pressure on you would be on behalf of the runner-up, Lois LaRue. That nice husband of hers, so-called Zack Foster. No, no. There, there were no overtures made to me, no pressure or prompting for Lois LaRue. Only for the late Cleo Odell. I, uh... In fact, uh, uh, question some 200 points I awarded her. In thinking it over later, I felt I was, uh, well, influenced. Who pressured you? Mind you, it it wasn't overt. It it was something subtle, more insidious. Say, a a, a notion cleverly planted in my thinking, a a bias. Never mind how it was done. Who pressured you? I'm... I'm... Cornell! I've been shot. Yeah. Someone outside your window, aiming a rifle. How bad is it? It hurts. Go seize... Can't. I've got to lie here, flat beside you, and keep my fingers crossed. There's a second shot coming. That was for me. Insurance, in case I'd gotten the whole story out of you. Name who pressured you for Cleo. Cornell. Cornell. Not much point questioning a corpse. Murder to shut Cornell up. A rifleman with a nice sense of timing. The search outside the window turned up nothing, except an overturned flower pot. No footprints. You don't find any on flagstone. The search of the grounds reintroduced me to my client, Julius. <laughs> Julius was sitting on the edge of a goldfish pond, crying into it. I loaned you my one good handkerchief this morning. I got it here in my pocket. Uh, Be my guest. Blow your nose. 
You've really got something to blubber about now. No kidding this time. I won't never stop crying. Do it someplace else. You've got the fish pond overflowing. I lost Cleo. Cleo lost more. What brings you here to Calamity House? To see you. I got things to talk over. Where did you park your BB gun? I, I don't get you. How long have you been squatting down here? Ten minutes. Then you heard two rifle shots. No. Like peals of thunder and with breaking glass. What are you, stone deaf? No. No what? Not stone deaf, but I don't hear good. I once got a drafty from it because I don't hear good. Oh, Julius, you kill me. Wouldn't I like to? Repeat that, please. For losing me, Cleo. Craig, they're going to pin it on me. Lay Cleo's mitre to me. On what ground? Fifteen grand. Double indemnity. That makes thirty. Thirty thousand dollars? You carried insurance on Cleo? Yeah. Double if Cleo went in an accident, like a train or a car. A policy that size is suspicious. All of a sudden, I even suspect you myself, Julius. Oh, don't say that. Are there any other suspicious circumstances wrapped around that policy? Yeah, there are. You see, I got the policy only two weeks before... Two weeks before Cleo went down the incline? Yeah. Two weeks before this afternoon? Yeah, that's what. Cleo was murdered and the killer tried awfully hard to make it look like an accident. A vehicular accident. Looks bad for me, huh? I can practically see you in the electric chair. Oh, Craig, don't say that. Get him like Julius and get your funny bone tickled. While the client may be fit you for a pair of horns. A comic character, friend Julius, weak in the head. But what was so dumb about 15 grand? Double indemnity equals 30. To me, it qualified Julius as a genius and maybe even a murderer. When a confidential cop's stuck for an answer, he reaches into his bag for a trick, like I did. My trick was to conceal evidence of murder. The illustrator and recent contest judge, Cornell. I decided to let him spend the first hour or so of the hereafter in a clothes closet. A corpse in a closet and uh, a locked room. In case people wanted about a little too freely in Calamity House. I made myself conspicuously available in Calamity House, the main lobby. I couldn't be missed by anybody. Even a blind man could reach me by the odor of my cigar. The first gent to buttonhole me was Zach Foster, looking as if it was quite an effort to come up and talk to me. Craig? Zach? Uh, okay to talk to you? Is it round two? No. <laughs> War's over as far as I'm concerned. Anyhow, I... Peace. It's wonderful. Oh, f frankly, I, I'm frightened stiff. Of what? Well, you mainly. The, w the way you go about things. And a slant you're working on. How Cleo O'Dell died. Who killed her and why. Did you? No. But it might fit. You might make it fit. That's why I'm scared. For me and a kid. Who's the kid? Lois. You see... You're about to make a confession. Yeah. A confession is something I think you've already guessed. That you're not married to Lois. And you did guess. No. We're in a contest on false pretenses. We don't qualify. Lois is single. I promoted her into the lie. I got her to go along with the swindle. Make out she was a Mrs. Mrs. Zach Foster. You've just talked yourself out of 20 grand. Yeah, I know. I'm scared off. I don't want a rap we don't rate. The murder of Cleo Dell can't be late to us. Now what, Zach? I'm going to locate the contest judge, Cornell, and make a clean breast. Tell him what I just told you. Why Lois LaRue should be disqualified. Then I'm going to clear out. Uh, I mean, if it's okay with you. It's okay with me. You've just cleared yourself, all right, in a bigger way than you suspect. But stick around a while, anyhow. I stuck it out in the main lobby of Calamity House, behind a cigar, conspicuously available to all comers. The next arrival to claim my ear was the Maharaja himself, 
the contest sponsor, Willoughby. No purple dressing gown this time. The only thing purple on him was his face. Craig. Your Highness. I've been embarrassed and distressed. The Willoughby name has become infamous. The contest has been scandalized. I've become notorious. Relax, Willoughby. Relax, you say? With this, this succession of outrages? I disavow the contest. I'll scuttle it. Simmer down. You're raising your blood pressure. This apathy in you, this idiotic calm, with two mothers crying out for justice? Mr. Craig, I find you offensive. And I find you guilty. What's that? Guilty. What nonsense is this? You just convicted yourself. Two murders, you said. Cleo Odell is one. Who's number two? Why, Vincent Cornell. Correct. But only the murderer could know that. Only the murderer? There's been no uh, advertising of Cornell's fate. I've got him in a clothes closet. His death is a secret two people share, me and the killer. That's you. You can clam up or you can talk. Whatever your motive was, it can wait. I can wait. But you're licked. Two murders. You did them both. Yes. I did them both. Cleo Odell, because she knew me when we met, she recognized me. An ugly and untalented person. I was forced to see that she won our contest. And after victory, I knew there'd be other blackmail, other tribute to pay. If I didn't dispose of her first. What did Cleo have on you? An unsolved murder. In the long ago past. Seventeen years ago. My wife, I'd struck her fatally in the heat of a quarrel. I'd fled, left town. And later resumed my life elsewhere. Here in New York with a new name. Cleo Odell was a Janet Tyler. In her teens then. The daughter of an next-door neighbor in our town. Ironic twist. Cleo showing up in your contest 17 years later. You're escaping the police in all that time, but running afoul of Cleo. A retribution. I'd have to pay for my crime sometime, I knew. I always knew. Cornell. Why did he have to die? Cornell could tell you that I had influenced him to favor Cleo. You see, I'd agreed to blackmail before. Before you decided that the only good blackmailer was a dead blackmailer. Yes. I wasn't at first aware of the lady's avarice. But I would be a captive forever. Case solved. You're under arrest for murder. Murder new and old. Now, who was it who said, your sins will find you out? You've been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Murder by Threes, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's the strange story titled Dead Loss, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, a man comes to visit me six months after he's buried. A lady dies long after she's dead. And a beautiful young girl does what? Good night, folks. See you next week. Featured in the role of Lois was Barbara Weeks. Barry Craig, starring William Gargan, was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Don Pardo speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.